All right, well, hey, good afternoon. Um, I'm, uh, I'm here to talk to you guys about uh, basically what John said, um, some of my experience uh, for how we built up a mobile engineering organization um, doing what I call building big apps uh, in a big company uh, in Philadelphia. So uh, just a little background. Um, so my name's Sean Brown. Uh, I work for Comcast here in Philadelphia over in the Comcast Center uh, on JFK. And um, I started working at Comcast uh, in an organization that we called SIM. Um, it stood for Comcast Interactive Media. And uh, it was funny, this was a, it's kind of like what John was saying, but this was an exciting, I guess I call it exciting, a uh, new division that uh, was created uh, inside of Comcast to help them build um, new products um, on, you know, sort of modern technologies like, say, the interweb. Uh, I'd say in a modern way. Uh, you, know, not, you don't always think about Comcast. The first thing that comes to mind when you think about Comcast isn't always modern software, awesome user experience uh, development. Um, so we, were, we really formed this division to, uh, uh, to help change that. And uh, so when I heard that, um, I immediately thought, you know, hey, I gotta go buy some ping pong tables, some Xboxes, try to set up an employee lounge. Um, jeans and t-shirts were a must. The, uh, you know, soda pop, agile, the works. Um, and it was, uh, it was actually a, a pretty cool uh, experience to go through that where, um, you know, uh, I'm not sure how familiar, you know, a lot of you guys might be with Comcast, the corporation, but it is a, a big, um, responsible, uh, very large corporation that has big, large corporate duties to, to perform and, um, you know, a bunch of guys running around in t-shirts and jeans and flip-flops um, can have some interesting effect on that. So, uh, but uh, they let us do what we do. And uh, when I started there, I started out leading the uh, engineering of a website that we had, which was one of those products that I mentioned called Fancast. Uh, which is now uh, XfinityTV.com. And uh, it, was really, uh, it was really one of our new products to bring TV onto the web, um, which is pretty exciting. Um, and then since, uh, I guess, April of 2010, when the iPad was getting started, um, I've helped uh, form and lead the engineering uh, for basically a, a mobile app development team uh, that internally we call it uh, Advanced Applications Engineering. And it was primarily tasked with going out and building um, similar to Fancast, but um, you know, TV products uh, on the mobile platforms. And so uh, just want to take a moment and say, uh, you know, I, I'm, this might be obvious, but um, I really love mobile software development. It's a, it's a, it's a rich, complex environment, um, so it, uh, it has its pitfalls, but um, it really gives you the ability to make, um, create pretty amazing user experiences uh, that I hadn't been, you know, uh, going from, you know, like Java, web, HTML, all that stuff. Um, I haven't been able to build the type of experiences up until now that I've been able to build um, well, me and a lot of other people uh, on, uh, on the mobile platforms. And, uh, you know, kind of leading into that is like, you know, there is a, uh, uh, what I call an amazingly talented group of people um, that work over at Comcast, uh, you know, building and supporting these TV apps um, that, uh, that I have the privilege to uh, work with every day and then also talk about with, with folks like you. So, uh, so let's get started. I, uh, I'm gonna, I have some slides prepared. I'm gonna talk about some stuff um, and, then, uh, and then hopefully leave plenty of time for, for questions at the end, um, if you guys have any. So uh, I guess starting out with some stuff that we all know um, or believe, but uh, mobile. I mean, it's important. Uh, it's the future. And uh, you know, I, I know there was some debate about this in the last couple years, but uh, and you know, I'm not gonna go through a bunch of stuff there, but I assume that you know, you're here um, because either you already believe this or you work for someone who does and has told you to go do something about it. So, um, and then the other point uh, about mobile is that it, um, it's uniquely complicated. 
And, uh, you know, when we started out, um, it, it seemed like this, like, sort of wild, uncontrolled space. And uh, you know, if you think about the, some of the things, it was like, you know, trying to get the right people, trying to establish the skills, like, you know, what's Objective-C, um, you know, building out native code capabilities, you know, how do we do testing, how do we, you know, it's like it's all shipped, we have to go through approvals, we have App Store diversity, you have OS diversity, you've got versions and hardware, the list went on and on. Um, but the first thing on our minds, um, as we were looking at it, when we were primarily uh, a web shop uh, before now, I'd say a pretty, pretty darn good one, um, but uh, um, we were looking at like, well, hey, what's different about mobile uh, from the web? And uh, the first thing that came to us was that uh, it's actually ship software. So, um, you know, all the components that you have that actually run uh, on the device are bundled together into a single app binary and they're delivered to your customers. And this is not, um, this to me was more like, you know, shrink wrap software back in the day um, than, say, modern web software. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's going to come with a, a fair amount of that, um, the considerations that have to go through with that. So, um, you know, when I was getting started on the web, I, I thought it was like super exciting because, you know, it's like I could iterate faster, I could deploy things in a couple days, I could deploy things in a couple minutes if we wanted to, you know, if something needed to happen, uh, which you couldn't do with shrink wrap software. Um, and, uh, but this was kind of an interesting sort of combination of that where, you know, yeah, it's like got a great ecosystem to actually deliver updates and, you know, uh, storefronts and whatnot that we didn't have back in the day. Um, but at the same time, it is like, you know, um, the second point here is that users are in control of their updates. And so um, uh, what was odd here was that, like, um, you know, we, I, I mentioned that, that SIM, Comcast Interactive Media, was formed as a, a sort of a, a new media alternative, and so we were primarily focused on the internet and the web. Um, but there's a very large engineering and operations group inside of Comcast that delivers and uh, manages the software that actually runs on the set-top boxes um, that are actually, it's not always obvious to people, but they're small little computers that are sitting underneath your TV. And so uh, they, they had this down, but, um, but they, they also didn't have the notion of, of the users being in control of their updates because that's an entirely managed uh, 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 it's an entirely managed architecture uh, where we can, you know, as an organization, you know, push updates down to our, our customers um, as we're ready for them. Um, and then the other thing was that, uh, that, was, that was different about this is that um, it, it was unique for us in that the users have a forum for uh, reviewing and rating your app. And uh, we, hadn't, uh, we hadn't actually dealt with that really before, um, where, you know, there's really no place to go to go rate your guide that you see on your TV when you push the button on your silver remote. Um, and uh, there's really no place to go rate, say, like, your website when you, you know, like, say, have a good experience or a bad experience. And humans being humans, they generally only complain. But um, still, this was, a, this was unique for us. And so um, th these were the... the, the the things that we were thinking about in terms of, okay, hey, now we got to go do mobile. Man, what do we do here? Uh, and we have to deal with, deal with this environment. And uh, so, you know, I think that for us, um, it, it's funny, but there's like, it's just like everything else in terms of software and technology. There's no magic bullet um, to all of this, but over the last couple years, um, you know, we did find things that, uh, that, uh, that we could do and, and started to implement that uh, could make things easier on ourselves um, trying to develop in this space um, that, uh, that we'll spend, uh, that, we'll, that we'll talk about a few of those things uh, today. So uh, the first most obvious one, um, but uh, I wanted to bring it out, was that you know, if you're going to go into mobile uh, in a big way, uh, you should form a mobile team. So uh, I've, I've been, uh, it's funny as a, uh, as kind of a recruiting exercise, we, we spend a, and we'll go through this more uh, later, but, um, you know, a lot of mobile still today, I think, in a lot of companies is kind of a, an afterthought or it's an extension to your web team. 
um, and you know it, it, it's somewhat underinvested uh, from a, from an organization standpoint. And I think that one thing that we did right going out of this was, um, and John made an interesting point earlier. I mean, like monetary resources weren't our primary concern. Um, so you know there is a certain amount of luxury that we had as a as a as a big organization to do this, but. Um, Forming a dedicated mobile team uh, is, is, a, is a very important um, operation, I think, uh, first step to actually being successful in this space. And, uh, you know, I kind of see the team as being, you know, really it's, you know, it needs a product, you know, to build, like a, like a sense, you know, something to go get and something that's meaty. Uh, it certainly needs the people and it'll need its own process uh, as well to, uh, to be able to deal with some of the unique uh, complexities of the, of the mobile environment that I mentioned before. The, uh, so I think on, in terms of the product, um, that was one of the big draws that, uh, I guess this is a little bit of a, a, a segue from the, other, from the other slide, but um, you know, uh, like one of my most effective recruiting tools, uh, hiring good engineers uh, into the team is the notion that we have a fairly large, well-invested mobile team that's dedicated to building mobile apps. Um, and that's all we do. And so, uh, uh, you know, that, can't emphasize that enough here. And so, uh, you know, that, that really leads into the product, which is, you know, like you've got, um, if you have a really good product that, you know, people can believe in uh, and that people use, it, uh, it not only like, you know, gets you customers, keeps you customers, um, builds up your brand, et cetera, but it also, it's, it's probably one of the most important things that you need to do to actually uh, maintain a good mobile team, uh, a good mobile engineering team in particular. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to go over real quickly just a couple of our products that are in the market. Um, not so much to, you know, educate everybody on, on how our product works, but just to kind of give some context uh, to some of the complexity of, of what we're trying to do in mobile, say, compared to um, a lot of other stuff. So uh, the two main products that we have now are um, Xfinity TV, and that's for iOS and Android. And uh, I'll uh, hopefully have a good demo of this. But basically what, it, what its purpose in life is to do is um, really to uh, give you a better experience um, browsing what's on TV, what's available to you through your Comcast subscription um, with the sort of added like, fun benefit of being able to change the channel uh, on your TVs uh, straight from you know, a, a press of, of a button on the app uh, versus like picking up your silver remote. And, um, and then for iOS, and we're bringing this out for Android very soon, uh, it also lets you stream some of that video uh, you know, straight to the device, um, whether you're in your home or out of your home. Uh, right now there's a Wi-Fi limitation on it, but you know, it really gives you a, um, uh, a consumption experience to actually be able to play the video right on your iPad, which is pretty cool uh, for us and our customers. And then uh, we, we launched uh, another app, um, and these are all in the app stores uh, for, for iOS, uh, which was a, a TV sports remote, uh, which is kind of a hybrid of, um, say, like a sports app like Score Center, where you can pick some favorite teams, see what's on different leagues, um, but then also with the added benefit of being able to, you know, when you like say, um, you know, you're watching the Phillies, um, you could either schedule that game to your DVR or you could actually change the channel to it, which is was, which was kind of cool. So kind of trying to extend upon on that, that core capability that, that draws people in to, uh, to build it out while at the same time kind of doing some new stuff that, uh, you know, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed this, but um, for those that you are, uh, those of you that are Comcast customers or uh, actually just about any cable customer, <laughs> sadly, like there's really no sports app on your TV uh, right now. So um, this is kind of a way for us to be able to extend some of the platform uh, some of the capabilities to our customers, but you know, through this this new mobile device. Um, so, real quick, I'll just do a real quick demo of um, the uh, <clears throat> of, of the the TV app, just again to you know, uh, hopefully give some context to some of the complexity that we're dealing with. Um, and it's running in the simulator, but um, you know, it, it runs just as well on iPads and hardware devices and whatnot. So, um, not a lot of smoke and mirrors here. But uh, I mean, the, the the main thing that you have um, is the uh, is a is a an enhanced online uh, sort of I guess they call these um, EPGs uh, electronic program guides, um, but uh, on a on an app experience this was um, I, I kind of challenged the guys to say hey go build the best grid 
we call this a grid, um, you know, ever built. And I think they, uh, they did a pretty good job of it. But, um, you know, one of the things that Comcast really prides itself on is uh, the volume of content that you can actually deliver to our customers. And so um, while that makes for an interesting marketing message, it provides a, a, very, uh, a very sort of uh, confounding technical and user experience problem where, you know, on one hand you have like more and more and more, but then, you know, as a customer you're like, well, how do I find what I want to watch? So um, this is, uh, you know, this is a Philadelphia head end. You can see like you can basically scroll through um, close to 2,000 channels and you can actually swipe in time very smoothly uh, in a very sort of what we call glassy, buttery way um, forward in time up to, up to two weeks. And so uh, one of my uh, favorite intern interview questions is to say, you know, try to get a sense for how much data that might actually be. Um, and, uh, you know, that's 2,000 rows of data up and down across two weeks of time um, with, uh, with shows that can range from 30 minutes to an hour. Um, I mean, you're talking like in the millions of, uh, of, uh, of actual cells of data that have to get processed. And they have to get processed in a way that um, people expect out of a native application. So if you're on the web, you know, clicking a button and saying, waiting for it to reload, kind of an expected behavior, but um, you know, on an app, you want to have that nice glassy feel. And, uh, and then just, uh, you know, basically you can click on a channel and what that did is it basically changed the channel uh, in my living room to whatever is not on right now, um, BBC America. And, uh, you know, and it has some like fun stuff around, you know, some previous channels and a list of scheduled recordings. Um, we have a, like a giant on-demand section. Uh, so, um, you know, like, I think there's something like uh, 10,000 titles, 20,000 titles that are actually available to you to watch. Um, and uh, we provide an experience on the app that, you know, we were asked to, you know, hey, make it so you could fling through the whole thing and just have it very smoothly perform. Um, so uh, that provided some interesting technical challenges, uh, as well as some, like, fairly advanced filtering notions of, you know, hey, I want to immediately be able to know what's new, free, what's Scrum, uh, HD. I mean, so like you can see how that stuff all, and in, like say it performs just as quickly on the, uh, on the devices as it does on the simulator. Um, and then uh, sort of the, the, the thing that got all of us excited was um, this notion of actually being able to play the videos right on your device. And this is for uh, iPhone and um, and iPads right now, but coming soon to Android. And uh, I just kept this screen up because um, it, uh, it highlights some of the other complexity that we're trying to do, which was around um, parental control. So if you look at, um, like I think my mom was telling me the other day, she's like, you know, hey, video on the iPad, that's not very complicated. You know, I've seen that before. And trying to explain, you know, I say, well, hey, you know, this is, you know, kind of serious video. There's like a lot of stuff that we have to deal with here. Um, you know, parental controls is one of those things that, uh, you're, uh, that I think that Comcast was pretty far ahead of, uh, say, other groups in, in actually establishing because we have such a long history, you know, 30-some years of actually having to provide parental controls to video, you know, through your set-top boxes. Um, we had to provide a similar capability on uh, uh, when we went into mobile devices. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like basically a similar, very similar to what we saw in the um, on-demand section, but this time you can actually go hit a button and... Um, it'll actually go out and uh, try to play the video for you. So, um, I said we don't need to watch the whole movie, but I uh, just wanted to show you guys what was there. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, this is actually, uh, it's funny, we just, uh, we, we just launched an update today um, that uh, we introduced this nice little feature uh, around managing your DVR. Um, so DVR is actually, a, a, actually, it's kind of an old technology, but it's like super useful um, for, uh, like say if you have kids, and you need to record Thundercats, and you know you also like to watch Game of Thrones. Uh, it just gives you kind of an interesting sort of like way to like modify the priority of stuff, you know, with like cool like sort of native controls that you know like do things kind of natively. Yeah, fun stuff. So um, uh, I'll have this available on uh, on on. Well, it's on the App Store, so you guys can play around with it uh, as you wish. But. Um, so I didn't want to take up the whole presentation with that, but really just, you know, again, to give you some context of the complexity that we're, um, that, uh, that we're trying, to, trying to build into these products there. there there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in there. 
So um, I guess in terms of, you know, here on forming a mobile team, you know, it's like you have to have the product, which I think we had, like everybody got really excited about it. And then you need to have the people. And that was our sort of, uh, that's what kind of scared me um, right at first because we, like I said, we were a web shop and now we're being asked to build, you know, sort of very complex mobile applications and I didn't have any Objective-C developers uh, uh, on iOS. And so, um, you know, we had a lot of conversations initially around, say, uh, you know, do we do HTML? Do we do like an app accelerator? Do we do, you know, something that kind of lets us take advantage of this stuff? And what we quickly realized is the, um, you know, a lot of those tools, um, at least at the time, uh, they're really targeting, you know, like, hey, fairly straightforward apps. Um, and so when you like try to throw, it's like, hey, I've got four million cells of data that I want someone to be able to get from point A to point B in, you know, under a couple seconds or a few swipes. It's like, oh, okay, well, now those, those aren't quite there. So um, that's diverging a little bit. But on, on the people side, this was a very interesting, uh, interesting problem to try, to try to solve with this mobile stuff. And um, so the first thing that I recommend to people do is do what I did, which is uh, go hire yourself a consultant. Um, and uh, it's going to be kind of a theme in terms and some of the process that, we, that, we, uh, that, that I'll go through later. But, um, you know, we got really lucky, uh, or maybe not lucky, but we were very fortunate to have, like, a really good consulting company come in and say, you know, like, really guide us through, um, you know, just, the, I mean, you know, all the, all the sort of complexities that I described before, hey, here's how you deal with them. Here's how you deal with Apple, you know, like, you know, um, you know make sure you have, uh, you know, a thick skin when it comes to App Store reviews. So everything from the intangible stuff to the like, you know, hey, guys, here's the native controls for, here's how you do key value observing. Here's, you know, here's how you use core data. Here's, you know, like, you know, use the native stuff. Um, so uh, I can't emphasize that enough that, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to kickstart the engineering side uh, of this without, without the help of um, some, some hired expertise. So um, definitely recommend that. Uh, and then the other one was, um, you know, uh, one thing that we were pretty successful at was we took um, a couple of our best engineers more in the domain space that had an interest in learning, say, Objective-C uh, and Android, and, you know, invested a little bit of training um, and gave them both uh, sort of the responsibility and the time to go build stuff up in this new tech. And so what they brought with them was the domain knowledge of the environment. So if you know TV, and, and, and that's a, um, one thing I've found throughout this whole process is that it's uh, uh, a lot of what's, what's that, what do they call it? a lot of what's old is new again, um, where, you know, it's like we were writing bundled software back in the 80s when, you know, like when you write like a VB program, it's like got you know, and a little MVC in there, and it's like talks to the network, and it does all this stuff. And uh, a lot of what we're doing here in mobile is very similar to that. Um, and so, you know, same thing here, where it's like, you know, if if your guys already know your domain, um, you know, and they're and they're really good engineers, uh, they'll pick up the new technology. So, um, you know, that, uh, and I only bring it up here that, that, and I think you'll find this a lot through here. So, I mean, I think a lot of this is very sort of common sense and not really magical in any way, um, but it, it's, it wasn't really obvious to us at the time that uh, that's the way to go, where, um, you know, it's like we had enormous pressures on deadlines and, you know, it's still the same software development, like the executives don't, haven't changed in anything, their, their desire for the, the, the products to be developed quickly is enhanced, um, but, uh, you know, being able to, you know, set it up to, uh, to say, okay, hey, let me, go, let me go train some people in this, and we'll take the hit for it schedule-wise, but it'll, take, it'll serve us well long-term. Um, definitely, uh, definitely was a win for us. Um, hire young guns. Uh, you know, I think that uh, we, had a, we, have a, we have an interesting mix on, on, on our team where it's like, you know, you've got like uh, old people and kids right out of college. So, um, and uh, and we've, we've been fortunate to to get good ones on both sides, but um, you know these kids coming out of school, um, you know this is a new technology, so to speak. So in a, in a way, they're just as capable and prepared to um, really take off and, and and kick butt in this field as as say guys that have been you know coding for 15 years. Um, now I would say that you would only want to do that um, you know when you've done the first two steps, right? So um, you need to be able to have have some technical wisdom and management there, but uh, um, that's definitely uh, 
a way that we're, we're uh, solving some of the staffing problem. Uh, the fourth one was, uh, um, again, seems obvious, but uh, you know, hire an engineering manager with experience in shipping software. So um, you know, I was really fortunate to um, uh, have, have an amazing uh, woman working for me who uh, has, uh, you know, I didn't quite know it at the time, but um, the impact of you know, her experience in shipping traditional software was absolutely huge. Um, in terms of all the things that an engineering manager has to do day to day around, you know, like, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't think anybody's really um, surprised at the fact that a lot of engineers don't really like to test their stuff very much um, or that uh, have their stuff tested. And um, that, that becomes a very critical part, you know, in the mobile space where users are in control of their software and their updates. So, um, again, kind of common sense, but uh, 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 having that at your management layer uh, is very important, and you know, as I looked at my team, like you know, my consultants were experienced in um, the, the the shipping software space, but you know, very few of my engineers had actually done big sort of like mobile apps or uh, or, or, or shipping type software before. But having the management layers and the tech leads with that experience was uh, was I think very critical. So, as you're looking for uh, an engineering manager to start up your new group, that's a that's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, and then the last thing was to uh, you know, go to where the mobile engineers are. And so we, um, you know, Comcast is a national company. Uh, well, we're all across the U.S. anyway. And so we're, uh, we're actually fortunate enough to have offices over in Silicon Valley. And uh, we actually started up, uh, you know, got some nice new office space over there. Um, there's a place called, uh, we call it uh, Comcast Innovation Center, Silicon Valley, I think it is. It's in Sunnyvale. Um, but, uh, you know, and we've, we've hired about, uh, I think, four coming on five uh, iOS and Android engineers out there, and they basically work as a remote extension to the um, to the engineering team in Philadelphia, uh, which is um, you know probably about maybe double that size. So, uh, so the, some thoughts on the people. Um, sort of going back to where we had. So we have product, the people, and the process. Um, I think is also important in this in this environment. And, uh, you know, again, this is like, you know, nothing, nothing super magical here, but um, uh, the, the top one is the one that I found was the least obvious to me, but um, it's, uh, it's the most important in terms of like us being able to deliver um, what we're doing effectively, which is to simplify. And so, uh, you know, I remember on the web and like, I mean, it kind of defies sort of engineering logic. I mean, we, um, uh, one thing I'll say about the culture of engineering that we have over in the in the Comcast Center is like there we, we ended up hiring like all these like really smart dudes that like can handle a ton of software code complexity, um, and so uh, you know there's a, the, one of my one of my favorite engineers used to joke that like some code was uh, you know only something that a PhD could understand and um, and uh, and when you move into this space with the, with the other stuff that's going on and the pace that we're trying to develop. The, the simplest solution, um, and uh, and I'll always be thankful to my uh, to my consultant for this. Is like the simplest solution is always the best one uh, when you're going down anything. So you know that leads to product, that leads to user experience, and it most certainly leads to software architecture design uh, and how you're doing the um, you know the decisions that you make in terms of how you go build things. And uh, I just want to emphasize there that. Simple doesn't mean like work around and hacks. It's the like you know the simplest thing to do um, is uh, is always the best thing, and then um, you know really the basics. But they they get amplified in the mobile space where um, I think uh, sometimes I jokingly tell people like you know yeah I mean you know you go into mobile application development you want to build natively on two to three platforms whether it's iOS Android and Microsoft um, you know it's going to take you. 10 times as long, it's going to cost you 10 times as much, but it'll be 10 times better than anything else you do. Um, but, you know, I don't think it's quite that bad. But um, regardless, like, if you're, if you're trying to do something that's complex, I mean, uh, can't emphasize enough. Like, I mean, preparation and planning. Um, and, uh, you know, for us, a lot of this ha happened um, very well on our product side where, you know, like, uh, I'm sure we've all been in situations where, you know, one day, you know, the head of your company wakes up and, you know, 
they see something cool and they're like, oh, hey, go build that. And it's like, well, you know, hey, we're building this. And they're like, no, 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 go build this and, you know, get it out in eight weeks. Um, we can't do that effectively in this environment. Uh, so um, preparation, huge. Um, and then planning, uh, you know, we, uh, we were agile. Uh, we still are agile. And we did all the things um, that, you know, agile people do, uh, which is sometimes not plan. Uh, sometimes it's not tracking. Sometimes you're like, you're so darn agile. You just, you know, like I can do anything at any time. And uh, we, uh, so we made a, um, oh, it took a couple years, but um, we went down a path where it's like, you know, hey, not waterfall, but, you know, when we get a problem to solve, like a big grid that needs to run through 4 million cells and be glassy and buttery, um, let's sit and think about that for a little bit, plan an approach, um, take the hit on the time up front, uh, and you'll benefit it from it later. And so um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with like severity tickets or whatnot, but you know, early on in the program, um, you know, after our first couple releases, we, you know, the, the typical process at Comcast is to, you know, when something goes wrong, you like, you know, gather all the people into a room that we call triage and like, you know, everybody like gets on the phone and we figure stuff out. Um, you know, we had a few of those at the beginning, and uh, thankfully we've had a lot fewer of those uh, later on. And uh, that's, that's at the, the worst case, but, you know, it even affects you in terms of development cycles to where, you know, you're, um, you're inevitably towards the end of your development cycle, and you've cut some corners and you haven't planned, and all of a sudden that dreaded defect comes in that's like, oh, crap, like, it, I can't change that. That's like that's going to change a bunch of other stuff and I'm supposed to be submitting to the App Store in two days. Um, and so, uh, so, again, kind of common sense, kind of basic, but planning uh, up front, um, definitely huge and, uh, and needed in this space more than, say, like a web environment where, you know, maybe you want to uh, accelerate more and take more chances because you, you have more security. So, and then, um, Build test, build test. So uh, you know, I mentioned this uh, this 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 engineering manager that I have. That um, you know, she is a uh, remarkable. Uh, the, probably the, the biggest thing that she did for us was really integrate us into a testing mindset as an engineering team. So um, not to get too in the weeds on process, but we basically have uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't call it test driven development in the, in the normal sense, but um, we pair a a quality assurance uh, engineer, aka tester with, um, you know, right at the beginning of the process uh, from, you know, UX and product ideation definition. Um, and then when, when uh, an engineer starts to go develop a feature, we create what we call like a feature team where, you know, the tester and the engineer, God forbid, are working together. One's writing testing and one's writing, you know, uh, code. And, uh, you know, when one person's writing code that's going to change something, they can actually talk to each other and say, um, you know, hey, I'm doing this. So, um, build test, build test, huge. And then, um, even after we do that process, uh, as we, uh, you know, there's a there's what we call like a release tax, where you know when we get ready to submit something, um, we've tested individual features uh, and, and the development therein, but then we test it again. Um, and uh, we have a, we have a couple flavors of this that were a little bit. Um, they raised a few eyebrows at the beginning, but um, you know, like why do you test so much? And then, like, once you're done testing, then you have to test it all again. And then, uh, and then we have this, like, uh, thing that's been fairly successful for us that I haven't seen other places. Um, but uh, it's uh, this thing that we call scenario testing, which uh, basically, you know, basically everybody on the team that's working on that release um, stops coding, stops testing, and uses the app uh, like a user. And, you know, we, we put some structure around it, but, um, you know, like, there might be different types of users that we have and different types of scenarios. But, you know, if we've rolled some video, it's like, go watch a video for two hours. And uh, it's funny to, um, to, to think of a, of a mobile engineer sitting there and spending two hours just watching video, but um, uh, it's, it's, it's served us well uh, in terms of uh, us being able to, to do this. And then, you know, again, common sense at the very end is, um, you know, party it up. Um, you know, the one nice thing about this type of process is that, you know, as you have bundled software that gets deployed, like, that's an event. Um, you know, there are a lot of times when we deploy updates to our website and it just felt like, oh, yeah, I just, yeah, that, that's cool. Um, this, you know, we, we definitely take an opportunity, every opportunity that we can to, you know, like, 
hey, we've all been working really hard. Um, you know, so making that as part of your process is, uh, is I think, a, a very important uh, part of that. So, um, so that, that's pretty much, I mean, you know, like I say, mostly common sense, but uh, the stuff that's worked for us in terms of the process to build this out. Um, the, uh, the other thing that uh, wasn't um, obvious to me when we started off, but um, it's this notion of like partnering uh, both with internal and external organizations. And so, um, you know, if you think about the nature of the space that we're going into, uh, you know, other companies are in charge of the storefronts. Um, so like Apple in particular approves your, uh, your, your code, your product before it can actually get delivered to customers. Um, Google doesn't have the same sort of approval process, but they have a storefront that you submit your stuff to and, and, and it goes through. So, um, and uh, so, so when we started, we're like, okay, hey, we gotta go partner externally. Um, but uh, in this environment, like partnering internally was, uh, was equally um, important. And uh, it's funny, I, I joke with my team that I spend most of my time with other teams uh, than I do with my own team uh, building the code. And, but I just kind of listed out here some of the stuff that we, uh, that we actually partner with on, on other teams inside of Comcast when you're trying to do something like change the channel on a set-top box that's underneath somebody's TV you know, in Ohio from here. And so, uh, you know, there's a, there's a ton of middleware and service engineering that has to go on through that. Um, you know, like uh, I'd say the actual application team's pretty small. I mean, we're probably talking about 20 to 30 people, depending on which parts of product and UX you, you throw in there. Um, but the, the services that, that they hit and are dependent upon that also need to be developed are, are, are massive. Um, so that's a, that's a huge thing, you know, as you're, uh, you know, as you're going down, uh, trying to develop mobile apps to, to do that. Um, I've, I've mentioned quality assurance and testing, huge um, operations, uh, and of course UX and product. I mean, it's, uh, it's the same old song and dance, right? I mean, it's new devices, new capabilities. Um, everybody works, you get a better product in the end if, if everybody can uh, work together to figure out uh, uh, how to take advantage of it. And then um, certainly the, uh, the, the partnering with external vendors um, is, uh, uh, I mentioned a little bit of this, but um, you know, we've invested, uh, we've benefited and invested quite a bit in developing relationships with um, you know, Apple and Google and our other software vendors. Um, you know, kind of on the people side, uh, you know, there's a couple of main conferences for mobile development. So Apple has WWDC and Google has IO. Um, send your developers there. In fact, send all of your developers there is my recommendation. It's a, um, you know, I think that conferences are one of those things that uh, as an organization, anybody that's a bean counter or has to deal with one is like, I'm not gonna send someone to a conference. Probably the number one thing you can do for retention and, and hiring and like actual capability development is send them to these conferences. Um, and I, I did a lot of thinking about like, What's so unique about these that, that other conferences, like say Java One or Apache Con, or, you know, like they're, you know, and, and I, I it, and, and part of it is like they've um, they've consolidated. So like I mean, there is one premier conference for iOS development, and that's WWDC, and and, and you know that investment really pays off, um, as well as you know get to know your Apple. I mean. You know, these are big organizations, of course, um, but there's, there's humans on the other side of it that, um, you know, are there to assist you in terms of, you know, hey, how do you get through the approval process? What are, you know, things that you can do? And so um, I think that one thing that's uh, very, that, that we've taken on fairly well is like, you know, our product owners um, have very actively and proactively reached out to uh, Apple especially and, you know, you know shared roadmap, um, shared some direction, and what that's done is basically, you know, yeah, there's an inevitable maybe two-week cycle in terms of when you submit your app to the App Store for it to get approved. Um, but them not being surprised at what's coming, um, again, it's kind of common sense, but um, it helps, you know. I mean, I, and in some ways, I kind of put myself in their shoes, and it's like, hey, here's some code. And I'm like, I'd look at it and be like, if I had no idea what I was doing, um, I'd have a different approach to it than if they told me, you know, three months ago, like, hey, I'm gonna go put a little thing to manage your DVR in there, and here's kind of what it's gonna do. And so, um, you know, I highly recommend doing that. On the software vendor side, I would say that, uh, you know, if you're doing anything of any complexity, like, um, say, video, that has to be protected, secured, um, with, say, like, DRM, and then, you know, need to do any kind of tracking on a big scale, like through, say, something like Omniture, 
and then, God forbid, you want to actually roll some advertising through the video at certain times. Um, that technology doesn't really exist sort of like off the shelf somewhere. And so, um, you know, what I found anyway was doing this is like we were asking um, our uh, software vendors, we had to work much more closely with them to actually um, to develop software together, uh, not just say go buy it from them and say, okay, hey, go give me something. Um, and so, you know, and then actually getting others, pairing other software vendors up with other software vendors, um, it seemed a little weird to me that like, you know, hey, why am I as a customer trying to manage all this? But um, it actually proved to be a, a kind of, you know, if you're in a new space trying to do new things, um, I guess not to be uh, completely unexpected. So um, something that wasn't obvious to me starting out uh, that I thought I'd share here. Um, and then sort of uh, the last thing I wanted to mention was, um, you know, architecture. Uh, so the, uh, it didn't really fit into the other stuff because it was sort of, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it kind of goes across a lot of it. Um, and, and again, some of it's pretty obvious, but um, the, there's an inevitable amount of conversation that goes on around the architecture that you're going to do. And um, the, uh, uh, I've been finding less sort of like um, top-down direction in terms of say like, you know, hey, how do you build the app architecture? So, you know, like, hey, do you use core data? Do you use key value observing? You know, do you use, you know, um, you know certain types of, uh, you know, spinner-based navigation, whatever. I mean, like, I mean people aren't going to dictate that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of interest in, you know, like as these apps get deployed and, and to, the, to, the, to the points that I was mentioning earlier where users are in control of stuff that, um, you know, how does it interface with the cloud and the services that actually go hit my backend systems, um, you know, authentication, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I just put use the cloud here more as like, I mean, I, uh, my engineers tend to call me like architecturally ghetto. Um, and because uh, I, I guess I sort of tend to, towards the hacking side, but, um, you know, I, I love putting code in the client because I think that like it, it scales well, it does fun stuff and whatever. And so, you know, we, we did some fun stuff in Webland where it's like we could put a bunch of stuff in JavaScript and deploy it, and it, it did some fun scale for us. But um, a lot riskier when you go into these mobile apps. And so we've been migrating a lot of our stuff um, and kind of to the, to the partnership comment that I made earlier. It's like, you know, put a middleware service up there that actually does some of this stuff. You know, put as much of your business logic as possible in the service. Um, and it's not anything new, uh, really. I mean, people have been doing this for years um, and, and touting that for years. But... Um, you know, new technology comes out uh, with, with an impact like this, and it just reemphasizes that point a lot. So I um, want to bring that up here. And then, you know, certainly use the native platform capabilities. You know, so it's like you take on, uh, if you take on the complexity of multiple OS versions, multiple hardware versions, hardware keyboards, software keyboards, slide in, slide out, tablets, you know, resolutions ranging from 2,000 pixels to, you know, 400 pixels, um, you know, there's a lot of people um, at Google that have built a lot of that stuff into Android and then done a really good job. Um, and there's a lot of people at Apple that have done that on iOS. You know, use those uh, as much as you can. And uh, it, sometimes it becomes a, you know, inevitable, uncomfortable conversation with, say, like user experience department that wants a certain thing a certain way. Um, but, uh, but that's a, that's a very, uh, very important uh, thing to, um, to take advantage of that we've that, that has benefited us for sure. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it. I mean, I think that just, you know, in summary, um, you know, what we've mentioned up here, it's like mobile is uniquely complicated. Um, hire, train, and maintain the right people. Simplify as much as possible. Uh, prepare, plan, and test extensively. And uh, partner internally and externally. Um, and uh, the, uh, you know, I say, I mean, mostly common sense, but uh, um, stuff, that, uh, stuff that we've definitely benefited from. So uh, that pretty much wraps it up. I mean, thanks, and uh, would uh, love to take any questions if anybody has any. Yeah, so I mean, my role was basically the, um, you know, the engineering director. And so um, they basically said, 
go build me an engineering team. But I was sort of an engineering director of one um, when I started off. Uh, well, I had one like web guy. Uh, and it's like, okay, hey, go, go build yourself an engineering team that can, that can uh, go build this app that we want to have built. And that pretty much continues to be my role. Um, I think that, uh, you know, now that I have a team uh, that's, that's uh, fairly large, it's mostly maintaining that team and then also trying to stay ahead of, um, you know, the, the stuff that I described. Um, it's, uh, it's funny how it's, uh, I mean, Comcast is a large organization, and so um, not everybody, you know, has bought into it. And so, like, you know, uh, as we go get new products, as we go get new stuff, um, there's, a, there's a fair amount of... Uh, explanation and evangelism that needs to happen there. Um, yeah. So they let you walk around the Comcast Center in jeans? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think they... Go up over a certain floor? Well, I, uh, we, um, we usually put on jackets when we go up to, like, say, the, the top floors. Um, uh, but uh, you'd be surprised at, um, you know, this was, uh, uh, when I was talking about how we started Sim, that was I don't, um, five years ago now six years ago maybe. So um, what, uh, <laughs> what we've seen is that uh, a, a lot of the culture, um, especially when we moved into the Comcast Center, we used to be, a, a Comcast used to be kind of all over Center City. And uh, when they built the big building, uh, we all moved into the same building. And uh, it, it was funny because we thought that, um, that we would sort of get crushed. Uh, and, uh, and the biggest concern was whether you could wear flip-flops, and uh, oddly enough, and whether you'd have espresso, I guess that was the other one. But um, the, uh, what ended up happening was kind of the opposite, where it's like you walk around the Comcast Center now, and it's like you'll see people in jeans on a Wednesday. It's kind of wild. Yes, John? Is the, is the user experience that you're delivering on Uh, well, I mean, I think that uh, they're starting to, um, but it's, um, uh, let me answer this, so, like, organizationally, we've structured to, like, have um, all of the user experience being defined, you know, across all the products, set-top boxes, app, web, um, all in one spot. Uh, so that's, that would sort of, I think, will lead to kind of a consolidation. Um, I say uh, my concern is that um, you know there, there's I'm always trying to push the envelope a bit in terms of user experience because like mobile gives you so much you know like there's a for all the complexity you get a lot you get like awesome like ORM capabilities between you know data from a service into a database that you can like do cool things you get cool animation stuff um, you know we've got uh, we've got some stuff coming up where we're you know we can do particle sort of like beams that, you know, when you do a gesture to like say swipe your screen right to left, um, you know, we can have a trail of like little cool particles. You, you can't do that on say a set-top box. And so, um, you know, uh, what the, the challenge I think for them is like, you know, hey, how much do we, do we thrive for consistency versus coolness on, on the different platforms? So we'll see how that goes. But uh, we, I mean, we have a fantastic user experience department. Um, you know, I think that, uh, 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 if anything, the direction that Comcast is trying to go is towards better user experiences, um, and, and that's certainly a focus from, from the top, which it hasn't always been, for sure. Is the uh, Xbox app the same team or same, same process? Uh, they're, um, they're not the same team, um, but they're, uh, they're, uh, they're a similar process in terms of um, there was a... Uh, the, the, uh, a lot of the Comcast world is separated into set-top box um, software um, that's sort of in your home, and then you know mobile and internet software that could be in or out of your home. And I'm on that side, and uh, it you know it wasn't really anything on purpose, other than um, one of the big uh, this is kind of getting into some cable ease, but like one of the big complexities that you deal with on, on, this, on this stuff is like rights to the actual content. So um, being in your home uh, and you know, gives you certain access to certain pieces of information that being out of your home you don't have. And so that was probably the main reason that the Xbox was developed that way.
Um, but they, they operate very similarly. I mean, they're jeans and t-shirts and, you know, cool guys. All right, well, thanks again. <laughs>